Good day, Julie. First of all, let me thank you for agreeing to do this video interview with me today over Zoom. For our audience, can you give, our, uh, give us your introduction and a brief bio about uh, your experiences in L&D? Yeah, absolutely. I've been in learning and development for, I think it's sort of running around 25 years now. Um, and so I remember the early days of things like web-based training and before we even called it e-learning. Um, and, uh, you know, I did did some projects in authorware back in the day and, you know, things like that. Um, but I primarily identify as an instructional designer or a learning strategy person, which is a lot of what I do now is kind of helping people figure out sort of overarching approaches to curriculum and things like that. Um, my master's is in instructional technology, and I think I'm best known for the book that I wrote about 10 years ago called Design for How People Learn, which was intended to be a good kind of science-backed book that helped people who were sort of new to the field, because so many people wind up in L&D because they know a lot about their subject, but not necessarily a lot about how to communicate it to other people. And that's the area where I spend a lot of my time is how do I how do we take some of the things that we know either from the science or from practice and figure out good practical ways for somebody who's maybe in their first, you know, five years of their career, figure out how to help them apply that and, you know, sort of be the best practitioner that they can be. Thank you for that. It, it is an excellent book. I highly recommend it. Uh, I really enjoyed reading it uh, uh, just a couple of years ago, in fact. But uh, now for our main event, would you please give our audience your take five, 10 minutes or so on what to measure and how to measure the impact of instruction in an enterprise learning context. Yeah, so I, I will disclaim that I'm not the big evaluation wonk. There's people who spend a lot more time in that space than I do, but I think that there's a couple of really crucial things that are sort of not being talked about enough. And one is um, the degree to which I think the thing that's that's probably harming us the most as a field is the lack of feedback in the system. Um, and so one of the fundamental things I think that happens to a lot of people who are working in L&D, especially in things like e-learning or any kind of digital solutions is they're just not getting enough feedback on their efforts. Um, they're not knowing, you know, they're not able to kind of figure out what works and what doesn't work or what's effective or what's more effective. Because I think, you know, obviously in the ideal world, we're doing Kirkpatrick levels or we're doing, you know, getting large scale data and the, the movement towards more data driven workplaces will help us with that feedback piece, right? But I think one of the issues that I'm seeing is that um, we should be getting that feedback any way we can. And even if you can't get proof, quote unquote, that you know it's effective, what can you do instead to get feedback? So for example, I had a client tell me, this is years and years ago, but tell me quite frankly that they didn't wanna do level three evaluation because politically they could not afford to show no effect in the organization. Too much money had been spent, too many reputations were on the line. And that's what happens when you don't have any kind of that feedback mechanism going. Because theoretically, we should be able to try something and be able to say, oh, that didn't work, let's try something else. And that shouldn't cost people their jobs, right? That should be how this works. Um, but the problem is we get further and further and further out on this, um, you know, I don't know if it's like walking the plank or something, I'm not sure what my metaphor should be, but further and further and further out there um, uh, on, you know, sort of the assertion that this is a good thing to do from a learning and development point of view. And then you get to the point where you're like, I can't afford to, to show that this didn't work or this didn't have the effect that we needed it to have. And so one of the, one of the things I've been talking about a lot lately is are there smaller scale things? So if you can't, for example, get enough um, leverage within the organization to do the kind of large scale, you know, level, Kirkpatrick level three behavior change study, can you do a cohort analysis where you go and follow 10 people around that took the class and see what they're doing differently? Or can you do um, something like Brinkerhoff success case model where you do the wide survey and then you do some targeted interviews within the people who absolutely say they're using it and the people who absolutely are like, nope, nothing, and try to understand. So anything, because um, a lot of times L&D doesn't have control over the things that they need to have control over in order to do these big scale evaluation measures. And so what happens is nothing, right? We just 
throw it up on the LMS and then move on. Um, and I could rant for another 20 minutes about SCORM um, and the problems with that in terms of how little data we're getting back from something like e-learning. Um, one of the big things I keep trying to get people to do is just do straight up usability testing whenever they build a digital solution. Because I'll sometimes ask the question, like, have you ever, when you, everybody's, almost everybody I talk to has done some classroom training. And I'm, I always ask the question, have you ever not changed anything between the first time you delivered a class and the second time you delivered a class? And the answer is, of course I changed something. It might be just the explanations. It might be just some instructions. It might be how long I leave for this activity or whatever. You always change stuff between the first time and the second time you deliver. We frequently are missing that feedback loop when it comes to e-learning. We build it, we send it out. And now user testing, which has gotten so easy. I mean, back when I was in grad school, we did it with a lab with you know, one-way mirror, two-way mirrors and video cameras and stuff. And now you can just do it on Zoom where you have somebody share their screen, you have them walk through the e-learning, tell you what they're thinking about as they go through it. And you find out that they totally missed the whole job aid piece that they needed to do that activity, or they totally ignored, you know, a huge swath of the feedback that was in this thing or, you know, whatever it is. But even just watching somebody walk through something that you've built provides an enormous amount of feedback and it's cheap and it's easy. And, you know, Jacob Nielsen did the study and said you only need five or six people really to get good quality data, in, you know, and so um, so there's really no excuse for not figuring out how to get some of those feedback mechanisms in place. But I think a lot of those little smaller scale, you know, um, uh, you know, like you feel like if people think they if they can't get data from the whole population, that's still not worth getting getting some data. And I feel really strongly that that's not the case. And then the other thing that I would say is the conversation. The thing about the conversation about evaluation that frustrates me is that it's often got a disembodied narrator. <laughs> and what I mean by that is every piece of information has like two really two to three really key parties who has the information who cares about the information you know are the are the main ones right so um we sometimes talk about vanity metrics like butts and seats or um you know how many like people have finished something in an lms but if you ask the question of who cares about that information well maybe your lms administrator cares about that information and so that's a useful piece of information in the right context Right. Um, the problem is your business owner who's trying to, you know, impact sales doesn't care about that information. And so I think what's often missing from the conversation around evaluation is, is that piece of like, who cares about this information? What information are we collecting? Where do we get it or who do we get it from? Um, you know, and so that there's, I, I've been working on this kind of table format where I've got those kind of things gridded out because um, we talk about, again, I keep referencing Kirkpatrick, but, but like there is no like who cares, who has it, you know, built it primarily into that framework. And I really do think that's one of the big pieces missing from the conversation is um, the, you know, the entities involved in it tend to be abstracted out. Like it's somehow level three is worth doing just because it's worth doing, but it's, it's worth doing because these people care about this information and it's going to be used in this way or, you know, those kinds of things. Julie, thank you for sharing your insights with us today. Um, excellent uh, the perspective. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye-bye.